Hello friends, today I'm gonna to show you how to take a basic chord progression like this and make it move like this. The best part is, we only need one chord. Before we dive into this lesson, there's a free PDF over on my website, so click that link down below and grab that so you can follow along with all of the chord voicings that we're about to talk about. We're going to build in this lesson a diminished seventh chord. If you've ever played one diminished seventh chord before, on ukulele, you've played every single diminished seventh chord because we only need one chord shape to play every single one on the instrument. The reason for that is that it's a cyclical chord or that we're stacking the same spacing notes or intervals between each other, in this case, a minor third. So if I play one, two, one, two, I'm playing D, F, A flat, B. And if I move this on up to the fourth fret, I'm playing the same exact notes, just in a different order. And then I can slide it on up to the seventh fret and then the 10th fret. And these are all the same exact chord, which means there's only three diminished seventh chords. You can also start on the second fret and go up, or you can start on the third fret and go up. It doesn't matter, but those are all of the diminished seventh chords. All we need and all we care about is this one shape right here, because we can move this to any fret on the fingerboard. But all that we need to know is not where do we place this diminished chord, but how do we resolve it to make it go where we want. A diminished seventh chord can resolve to a lot of different places, but in this lesson we're going to talk about the four main places that can resolve to and how to easily find them, because that's what really matters. So if you put down your diminished seventh chord on the first fret, one, two, one, two, all we need to know is it can resolve up one fret on any string. So we're playing this and we see this A flat that we're playing on the first fret here. We resolve it up to the second fret that gives us an A chord, an A major chord in this case. Diminished chord, A major. Sounds resolved. But what if we just choose the note that's next to the note that we're playing on the C string? So we're playing the second fret, we resolve up to the third, that gives us an E flat. So we have diminished chord and then an E flat. And that's another natural resolution. Likewise, we can select the note on our E string. So we're playing an F on the first fret, so we can resolve this up to an F sharp. And then finally, we can go to our A string. We're playing a B. We resolve this up to the third fret, which is a C chord. So we have diminished chord, C chord. So we can go to A, to E flat, to F sharp, to, or to C. But why does this work? That's the real question. The reality is that these diminished seventh chords are just regular old dominant seventh chords. And we can show this with a magic trick and where it resolves to. If you take this diminished chord, if we move any note in this down one fret, we have a regular old seventh chord. Let's see what happens if we remove the note on our E string. So instead of playing one, two, one, two, we play one, two, open two. E seventh leads us to A7. Likewise, what if we take away the note on the A string here? So we go from one, two, one, two, to one, two, one, one. That's a B flat seven. Ah, now we really hear that resolution to the E flat. Likewise, let's bring the note down on our C string. This gives us a C sharp seven, resolving to F sharp. And then finally, if we remove the note from our A string, what's that? It's a good old G seventh chord, resolving to C. So all these diminished seventh chords are just a different way to play a regular old dominant seventh chord. But the key thing to remember is that if we're targeting chord, if we want to go somewhere, we just need to play the diminished chord that is one fret below that note. So let's look at this in context of a song. For this exercise, we're going to use the A section of Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. If you're not familiar with this tune, I'll link in the description to a lesson and play along that I did on this a few weeks ago. But what's really important here is that that song uses a few very common chord progressions, which means that all the chord movements we're about to learn are going to come up in other jazz standards as well. So let's look at the basic chord changes of the song just once through to get it under our fingers and in our ears. We'll be starting on an F. Two, three, where we go F twice, D minor seventh, G minor seventh, C seventh. And then we repeat that F, D minor seventh, G minor seventh, 
C7. Then changes here, we go to F to F7. B flat six, D flat minor six, and F, C7, and F. And now let's make these chords move by just inserting our diminished chords to bridge the gap between each of these chord changes. Now remember that to find the diminished chord that we need, we just need to be a half step below the chord that we're targeting. So let's look at what that means in practice. We're starting on an F. Our next chord is a D minor seventh, right? So here's our D on the second fret of the C string. So our diminished chord will be down here, open one, open one. And note, this is just this chord shape, but with open strings, because this wants to resolve here. So we get F, diminished, D minor seventh. Try that with me, just the first three chords. One, two, three, four. And our next chord we're going to is a G minor seventh. So where's G? Third fret of our E string. So we want to select the diminished chord that's directly below that. Two, three, two, three. Resolving to minor. So we go F to diminished, to D minor seventh, diminished on the second fret, G minor seventh. Let's try that first measure. Two, three, four. From this G minor seventh, we go to a C seventh. Where's our C? Third fret right here, so we get that one, two, one, two chord. And it's acting as the sound of a G seventh here. So we have diminished chord resolving to C, but we're gonna play a C seventh. And then we have again that open string diminished seventh chord leading us back to F, right? So let's listen to these first two measures, and then we'll try it together. Two, three, four. Let's try the first four together, since they're identical. Two, three, four. To C7, to diminished, and repeat, F. We go back to F. What's our next chord? It's F7, but we've already said that all these diminished seventh chords are just substituting for that F7, then what are we targeting? We're targeting a B flat chord next. So if we play two, three, two, three, this diminished seventh chord works in place of our F7 chord. Remember how we just moved the name of the diminished seventh chord down one fret, made a dominant seventh. So this F7 is the same as this diminished chord, two, three, two, three. It's an F7 with a flat nine, so we can play. We're gonna leave those B flats alone. And we resolve to F. We've already targeted C7 before, right? That's our one, two, one, two. C7, target F. So let's try this whole first movement exercise together using way too many diminished chords in context. But listen to how this creates a moving harmony that lets us weave the chords in and out instead of just having chunky chords the entire time. One, two, three, four. in place of the seventh, these B flats, they're nice as they are. And this is a great start to using diminished, but what if we want to take this further and we want these diminished chords to take us up the fingerboard? That's where we need to look at a different concept, which is the sixth diminished scale. Barry Harris was one of the greatest educators in the history of jazz, a phenomenal piano player. He came up with a lot of harmonic concepts and managed to distill ideas such as these moving diminished chords in ways that I think a lot of people were not able to. But one of his main concepts was what's called the sixth diminished scale, which sounds very fancy, but it actually makes playing and understanding harmony a lot easier. The general concept is this. We play a major scale, in this case F, We make it what's called an octatonic scale, or we add an extra note, so it's an eight note scale. 
and that note is going to be a diminished sixth. So it's going to be a flat six, which in our case is going to be a D flat. So our sixth diminished scale looks like this. And while this has a lot of applications, we're just gonna scratch the surface here, which is the harmony that is created from this sixth diminished scale. What makes this so unique is that this creates just two chords. The first chord it has is F, A, C, there's an F chord, and we add a D to it. So that becomes an F sixth chord. And every other chord in this scale is an F sixth chord. But if we build a chord off of the second scale degree. Ah, what's that? That right there is our diminished seventh chord, and that's gonna repeat off of every single other scale degree. So we can look at this as a chord scale, starting on an F sixth chord, two, two, one, three, and it's gonna cycle in versions of your sixth chord to a diminished seventh chord. So like F6, then diminished on the third fret. Straight across the fifth fret for F6. Diminished on the sixth fret. F6 up on the seventh fret. Diminished up on the ninth fret. And then just right on up to our F6 again. Now, it doesn't matter whether you can play the soul scale. This is a great exercise to do this, but these chord voicings here can help us make the harmony move a lot more. So let's bounce back to Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea and apply some of these chord voicings that are contained in the sixth diminished scale to make this harmony move even more. Our concept here is not changing. We're still just creating movement within the chords by adding a diminished chord a half step below to wherever we want to target. But we're going to use these sixth chord voicings going up. And one thing to keep in mind is that F6 and a D minor seventh are exactly the same grouping of notes. It just depends what your bass player is playing, which as a uke player gives us a lot of latitude for where we can play these up and down the neck. So we're gonna start on F6, two, two, one, three. Instead of coming down for this diminished chord, let's go up. So that's gonna target the fifth fret, so it's gonna be three, four, three, four, our diminished chord on the third fret, so we end up with. And then we're gonna target G, but we're gonna do it differently here. Remember we were always targeting from below? You can target from above as well. So on this F6, and I come to a diminished chord here, I'm targeting this G on the third fret. Ah, uh, let's listen to that harmony now and how it moves over the fingerboard. And there's our G minor seventh chord, three, five, three, five. Now move these two fingers up a fret. And that's getting us to target our C seventh. Move the pinky back. Let's listen to these first four bars for a moment here with this changed harmony. Ah, now we're creating some interest. And note that all we're really doing is just inserting still these diminished chords, we're now mixing it up with sixth voicings. Let's try that first line together since it's identical, these two back-to-back -back progressions. One, two, three, four. This diminished chord here, yes, it could resolve down here, right? But what if we resolve it up instead to the F6 here? So we're gonna do that. We're gonna resolve to this F6. And it goes F6 to F7 afterwards. So we're gonna change some things here. So we're gonna go F6, come down as if we're targeting an F again. Three, four, three, four, right? We come down to F9 here. Two, three, 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 and then diminished. Right, because there's our, our F7 substitution there. F7 with a flat nine. Let's listen to that. Ah, that really brings us into that B flat chord, doesn't it? Let's try that together. That F6 bar. Two, three, four. B flat six. And now we're going to add some moving diminished chords on the B flat to move things. So we go B flat six, diminished on the second fret, because what are we doing? We're targeting another B flat. A, D, 
to B flat. Here's our B flat minor voice, sing three, five, three, four. And then just bring it on down to a diminished chord. And that brings us back to our F. Let's listen to that B flat six chord. And then bringing us back up, we get F sixth. We're targeting C seventh as we always do. We'll play a different C seventh here. Make it diminished and then F major seventh. And so let's listen to this second line of Between the Devil and Deep Blue Sea with all these new moving diminished chords in here. Three, four. Remember to go download that PDF and check out the Magic Ukulele Club where we do lessons like this every week while you're over there. I know there are too many chords for all of us to remember in this lesson, so that handy cheat sheet will really help. But the main takeaway from this is not all of these fancy chord voicings. It's the one chord voicing. So remember that if you play that diminished seventh chord, if you want it to take you anywhere on the fingerboard, just place it a half step below the chord that you're targeting. See you all next week.